Over Industry. We are broadcasting live tonight from Washington, D.C. I'm your host, Cassandra Archer, a.k.a. the Divine Diva of Comedy. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We have a great show. You better tune in to this Vessel Radio. See, this is a wonderful thing, man. When I open these two eyes, the world has not been kind to me. It's not pleasing to me. The world no longer appeals to me. Tune in every Tuesday right here at Vessel Radio. 7 o'clock, don't be late, you know. The majority of the males in my family are in jail to this day. Wow. And it's Brother Shazan and Preston. My God, man, you can't tell me that you're not good people. It says, hello, my name is D. My mother's currently in the hospital at this present time in ICU due to a blood clot in her heart. For five straight weeks, I went to five straight funerals. Um, wow. I just lost a child. I just received news today that I may not be able to carry a pregnancy to full term. Tune into Vessel Radio every Tuesday. Eh? You hear me I'm saying? Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to Vessel Radio. I'm your host, Cassandra Archer, also known as the Divine Diva of Comedy. And joining me today is this crazy guy, the wonderful Colton Neal, a.k.a. The Apostle. Say what's up. How y'all doing out there tonight, man? I'm just blessed to be here, man. Let's do it. If you have not seen this gentleman live on stage, you are missing a treat. So make sure you check out The Apostle, okay? So we're going to talk about a whole lot of things today. We have a great show with a wonderful topic. Before we get into that, I want to introduce the man behind the music, no other than our producer of the show, Shazan. What's up, Shazan? What's going on, everybody? I am so glad to be back behind the music. <laughs> I know the last couple of weeks you all saw me in front of the camera had to go ahead and relinquish that spot back to our lovely host Cassandra the divine diva of comedy but listen before we go ahead and get this show started as always we want to make sure we leave you or start this evening off with our scripture for today today's scripture comes from John chapter 3 verse 16 and it reads for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not die, but will have eternal life. And we, we picked that scripture specifically because today we're going to be talking all about love. And I know a lot of you guys are out there spending hundreds of dollars on flowers, on roses, unnecessarily trying to show what love <laughs> is all about. But I can tell you there is only one person that's going to be able to give you that divine unconditional agape love and that's from our father god so without any further delay i'm going to go ahead and turn the microphone and the camera back over to our host and co-host the divine diva of comedy and the apostle <laughs> that's right that's <laughs> right i am just oh i'm tired i had a great weekend what you do this weekend wow you know <laughs> what man me and my wife just sat back and relaxed and enjoyed each other this weekend that's what we did yeah, um, I just ran around doing a whole lot of things. I enjoy my weekends, but, you know, the weekends are busy for me. You being an entertainer, weekends are busy for you, too. That's why it was so <laughs> great to relax. You know what I mean? <laughs> Threw on my cowboy slippers, and we enjoyed each other. So this is a busy weekend coming up, Valentine's Day weekend, huh? You ready? You got your money? You got your money ready? <laughs> what? Oh, you? Oh, let me find out. You already made reservations and stuff for your things. I can't put it out there. You got to wait for the surprise. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to have a scripture of the day first, and then we're going to be able to enjoy our wonderful couples that we have joining us. This is going to be a powerful show. You make sure you stay tuned for the entire show. And married couples out there, you need to tune in because you can probably get some answers from what's going on today. Shazan, you have a scripture for us today, sir? Well, we did read the scripture, oh, which sorry. was John 3, 16. <laughs> You know what's funny, guys? For those of you who think this is all tape, this is live. This is how we actually have some fun. But listen, our topic for today, actually, the scripture that is going to be based around our topic is found from Proverbs 18 and 22. And it says that he who findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. But now the question of the day is, so what does a woman who finds a husband obtain. I know a lot of you are on Facebook thinking about 
that particular topic. Some of you actually responded with some pretty interesting answers. I have responses received that the woman obtains money. Some people have said, has said that uh, the woman obtains a great husband. Uh, others have said they obtain absolutely nothing. Well, joining us this evening, we have people who have been married quite some time who know what love is about. As I indicated earlier, it's all about God bringing us together, bringing these married couples together for a purpose. So they're going to go ahead and share with you this evening about their experiences within love, within marriage, as well as what God ordains and the true answer to that question as to what a woman finds in a husband. Is that really in order? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> all right, all right. And to answer some of your questions, we have two lovely couples here tonight. And they are very dear and near to my heart. Um, to my left is Elder Ron Quarles, my, um, my wonderful, wonderful family friend, and the beautiful Lady Faye. And they are, uh, look, these answers that you're going to get, they know a lot of stuff because they've been married at least 36 years, okay? So they know a whole lot of things. And to my right, this lovely young couple, the beautiful Sister Max Ann and Minister Nasheen Stevens. Yes, and they were sweethearts in high school, okay? So they started out from the books, so they got educated early, right? <laughs> And they have a wonderful family. So, um, and also, Apostle, your wife is not here, but you're married. I think I'm the single. I'm the single lady in the middle. So I'm gonna be the uh, the person who throws out the opposing questions. So, what do you think about the topic? Um, a man who finds a wife finds a good thing and finds favor from God, but when a woman finds a husband, that's kind of puzzling. So, Elder, I'm gonna start with you. What do you what What does that topic? What does that s scripture mean? Well, uh, that scripture uh, has multiple meanings. Uh, first of all, I believe that the word find in that verse refers to uh, the natural order or the act or the action of finding. Mm -hmm. And then second, uh, it also <laughs> refers to the fact that uh, God's divine uh, providence and God's divine administration uh, brings about blessings and favor on the man who finds a wife. Okay. So the word find has multiple meanings, the natural order of finding, and then the fact that when a man finds a wife, he also finds favor and blessing from the Lord. So what about when a woman finds a husband? I don't know exactly how <laughs> that goes, uh, but, but I will say that uh, I believe that uh, a woman who is looking for a husband uh, I'm all I could all I would suggest is that she's looking for a man who meets the qualifications and the characteristics of being a godly husband and a godly man. Okay, now I Sister think that's Faye, did, did you find <laughs> Elder or did he find you? Well, he found me. Okay, um, all right. Yes, and I can say that um, the scripture a man that finds a, a woman finds a good thing. Um, but I can say that I found in him some good things. Okay. Um, a man of God, uh, uh, he's the priest of the home. Mm -hmm. He's a great provider. Wonderful. Uh, loves and cares for his children. Down through the years, he's reared them and taken care of, of us all. So um, in finding, if you want to say a woman finding a man, what I, this is what I have found in him. Amen, amen. Okay, um, Minister Nasheen. So a man, when a man finds a woman, he finds a good thing. And so when a woman finds a husband, what do you think that means? Um, what do you think happens? Well, let's, take, let's, let's, let's go with order because okay. order is due. And, and the first question was uh, when a man finds a wife. Uh -huh. um, the other question is out of order. So therefore, <laughs> um, okay. I, I, tr I, I truly, that's not biblical. Okay. That's not biblical because um, uh, Genesis talk about um, that Eve or... Uh, the woman came from out of man so there was man first okay and then there was one man and god simply said that it's not good uh, for man to be alone mm -hmm. and in that alone that finding uh finding himself alone uh oftentimes 
uh, you need that thing. Okay. And you'd be surprised of, uh, you know, a lot of brothers who haven't found that thing uh, <laughs> but become void uh, within the inside because they haven't found that thing. Uh, a woman uh, completes a man. All right. Completes a man. Uh, not to say that man isn't whole. Uh, he's holding Christ. He's holding God. Uh, but the completion comes in uh, uh, within that thing. Is <laughs> <laughs> Sister Mike saying, is he speaking truthfully? Did you find him or did he find you? That I, thing? That thing. <laughs> oh. that thing. <laughs> okay. I think we found each other. Um, okay. We were friends first. Okay. That always helps. Mm -hmm. um, and I cannot speak for every woman, but for me, um, finding my husband was the missing piece to a puzzle, Okay, I can okay. say, to fulfill my purpose or help oh. me fulfill my purpose. Wow. So. Wow. Okay, Carl, do you have any objections? No. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> so how did you and your wife, did, did your wife find you or did you find her and... Were you were you correct? Uh oh, you don't you don't remember? Uh oh. Uh, I remember, <laughs> but the thing is, the thing with our situation is, God kind of made us find each other. Okay. I mean, definitely, it took it took God's wisdom and to open my eyes to realize that this was the one. But like I said, He orchestrated the whole entire thing. We both had came from some pretty bad situations in the past that kind of kept us on the outs from even ending into a relationship. He just put us at the right place at the right time. Okay. And the rest is history, and I thank God for doing that for me, too. So, I guess my next question would be, were, were you saved before you became married? Or how, how long did it take before you were saved in your marriage? Pretty much. Um, and so, if, if, not, if you were not saved when you, be, when you first met, when you came to Christ, how do you think God helped your marriage? I'm going to start with um, Maxine and, and Ashin. For me, I can say I've been saved since the age of 10, but living right, I would say maybe age of 19, honestly. Okay. Um, it did definitely help our marriage. Um, Nasheen was saved as well. Um, we eventually uh, joined the church. He joined the church that I attended, and that was a blessing that, that helped us out to have that covering. Um, <laughs> you looking like uh, she's not she, saying everything. <laughs> no, I'm laughing because she she said number one, she found me. <laughs> number oh, two, somebody, yeah, I, number two, oh. I, I'm, I'm helping her complete her you mission. Make her yeah, 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 yeah. And then number three was uh, what was that? Oh, I joined the church <laughs> that she attended. Um, what, what makes her look? I mean, this is beautiful. Um, <laughs> I, I love her. I love her. Um, but. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, in regards to um, salvation, uh, of course, um, my upbringing, of course, born and raised in church, okay. um, and I, I knew uh, the call of God okay. on my life. That was the, you know, just wasn't salvation and being saved, because after you save, you know, you go to deliverance, and then there's the purpose. You have to walk in your calling and whatever it is that God uh, preordained and destined you to do. And in that preordained and that destiny, as you walk in, Again, I found my wife, Amen. Uh, which uh, helped me with um, with my purpose. Amen. Amen. So that salvation piece is definitely is uh, important. Were you guys saved before marriage? Uh oh, um, you looked at Sister Faith. No, no. She got uh, okay. <laughs> well, I wasn't saved before we were married, uh, but my uh, my husband he was, and so um, with him being uh, um, you know head of the household and his family a uh, strong. Um, save family you know and um i just grew to love and to know christ yeah and i yeah. became saved in 1984 uh yeah and that was a time that we sort of had a crucial time in our lives because our son he was born and and he was actually born dead and uh wow. that really brought me closer to Christ mm -hmm. and uh, I mean he's living he's living now God blessed him and he has a good wow. life wow. Wow. so give God praise for that but, um, yes I am I'm, I'm saved now and filled with the Holy Spirit so I'm grateful for that Shazan you have any questions for these these wonderful people <laughs> actually I do um, in fact it was it was a question that just came to mind uh, when the minister had mentioned Genesis 2:18, which says and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Now, I read somewhere that the Trinity, which obviously is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, is symbolic 
to that of family and that that's what God's intention was was for man to have a family with that in mind my question to you lovely couples is do you believe everyone is supposed to be married yes I do um, and when we say marriage we have to look at the the, the connotation the definition and the uh, background of marriage because ultimately uh, God is already married he said he's married to the backslider so that marriage the, in, the intertwine in, in regards to marriage um, when when you bring in uh, the, the the woman when man is was alone and brought in the woman uh, it's simply uh, confirmed the word it's uh, between two immutable things did God uh, uh, give witness or or a testimony so that testimony had to come between that husband and wife and not to say that you uh, by yourself brother can't marry Christ and, and you <laughs> marry that word and and the testimony is the Holy Spirit but, but everybody, everybody everybody shouldn't be married because sometimes you see some <laughs> you see some couples you like, they just need to leave each other alone well, well, uh, in reference to that question uh, scripture records that the apostle Paul was not married and in response to the question of marriage he encouraged the church uh, that I would rather you marry than burn mm. and that, that burn means to burn in your lust if you can't uh, uh, you know keep your loins in check if you can't keep your desires in check rather than obey and sin uh, before a holy God he suggested that you get married but he himself was not married uh, he was uh, as uh, Minister Nasheen said I believe that he was married to the call and the purpose of, and the plan of God on his life and so my answer is I don't think that a, uh, that a man has to be married uh, but I think that a man should uh, evaluate uh, uh, you know the word of God and the will of God for his life and if uh, if he can't uh, control himself or can't control his desires I'm going to go with the apostle Paul said that in that case I would rather that you marry uh, than burn also in Genesis uh, uh, the scripture that he referred to uh, one of the things that I've learned is that the text says that it's not good for a man to be alone uh, 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 but it, it didn't say uh, that it's not, that I believe what it's referring to is that being alone and being lonely is two different things. Okay. And so when, you, when you're alone, that means that your desires or your, or your, uh, your, your, uh, your passion to find the mate is different than being lonely. When you're lonely, you're trying to fill a void. And I believe that, that being single in and of itself creates some type of void. But okay. the text said it's not good to be alone. So being lonely is a different thing because then it brings about a different mindset, a different attitude about as you enter yeah, into see, the that's, marriage. That's going to take it to a whole nother that's level because some of y'all out there going to be burning, okay? Because <laughs> not wanting to be alone don't mean that you should just be with anyone, okay? Like um, uh, Adam and Steve, you know what I mean? So I'm sure some of you out there want to ask questions. Hit us up at Vessel Radio on Instagram and Twitter or give us a call at D1 Vessel. That's 276 318-3773 Vessel Radio You gotta stay tuned And I know some of y'all have questions Don't be scared, call Cause we wanna know who gonna burn We'll be right back after this quick commercial break <laughs> Cassandra, Cassandra Where are you rushing off to? I'm trying to get to Manassas, Virginia For the Faith, Love and Laughter show but, but Cassandra, that's not until February. That's okay. I want to get there as early as I can. Don't you know Christian comedian E. Boogie will be there? A. and Marcus D. Wiley? But Cassandra, do you have your ticket yet? I don't need a ticket. I'm performing. I'm the divine diva of comedy. I'm going to go to Manassas and hit that mic. I'm going to bring it. Huh. I'm going to be there. You should too. See ya. Inspiration Have my spirit flying higher Inspiration Gives me reason to inspire Hey, you're going to be coming up in here pulling that on me And he's just so smart now They always got something to say back Just ready to talk I said, you think you're so smart, don't you? Because I am <laughs> I said, spell can't Mississippi. He's in the river or the stick. <laughs> I can tell these 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vessel Ministry Over Industry. Once again, if you are just tuning in, be sure to send your comments via email to VesselRadio at gmail.com or give us a call at 276-318-3773. That is 276-D1-Vessel. We are talking to some beautiful married, Christian married couples and they're going to go ahead and answer those difficult questions that I know some of you guys have right now. So I'm going to start with another question. And the word of God says in Hebrews 13 and 4, marriage is honorable among all and the bed undefiled. With that said, to my married couples, I like to know, do you feel that your body belongs to you or does it belong completely to your spouse? Sister Maxine, <laughs> that your body? I'm going to say <laughs> that my body belongs to him. Uh, okay. I'm going to oh. say that. Okay. <laughs> Lady Faye? He knows it belongs to him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, well what, what, what about the husbands? Uh, husbands, does your body belong to you or to your wives? How about that? <laughs> I'm going to say, I guess it belongs to her. <laughs> <laughs> Elder, what you think? Well, I believe that my wife's uh, body belongs to me, but, I, but having said that, I have a re responsibility to honor it and to nurture it and to care for it and not to abuse it because with every level of authority there also comes a level of stewardship and so I believe that it belongs to me but I also take responsibility for exercising care, compassion, nurturing and stewardship over that which she has entrusted to me. <laughs> amen, amen. All right. Well, I'm, right. I'm glad you said that because 1 Corinthians 7 and 4 actually says a wife is not the master of her own body, but her husband is. And in the same way, a husband is not the master of his own body, but his wife is. Mm -hmm. So great, great answers, guys. Great answers. I'll turn the, the camera and mic back over to our host now. <laughs> that, means, that means when you want to go play golf, she can say, you need to leave my body at home. <laughs> Did you have a question? Absolutely. Puzzle? The number one topic of all of these is love. So okay. to each person down here, sitting here, what is your true definition of what love is? Not just the earthly, but the spiritual. What is the definition of love to you? Okay. For me, that agape love, that unconditional love. Um, for me, that's it. That's, that's complete. Agape is the the whole thing, the whole package. Uh, God. 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 is your definition of, of love? It. God. Elder? Uh, I believe that, uh, as uh, she stated, I believe that agape is the God kind of love. And uh, the Bible uh, demonstrates for us and teaches us that Love is patient, love is kind, love is gentle, love does not seek itself, it does not seek to, uh, to be pleased, but to please. And so I believe that agape love or unconditional love has certain characteristics and traits that accompany it. And when we're operating in true love, those things should be present. Yes, I say the love of God, and there is no other love like his, and never will be. Wow, so, and you've been married for 36 years, and how long have you been married? 18. 18. Eight, 22nd. Eight, wow. 22nd. 22nd year anniversary, yay! Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. 18 years. Wow. 
So um, I guess in your differences, and I'm sure all couples have differences, how do you feel that God helps you um, when you're having your differences uh, or, um, you know, not agreeing with each other sometimes? Just being in your spiritual walk, how do you think that God helps you out with that? Well, my answer would be uh, one of the benefits and blessings of being saved is that the Holy Spirit takes up residence in the life of a believer. And with the presence of the Holy Spirit comes power. And not only that, it's the Holy Spirit who uh, sustains us, who keeps us, who directs us and guides us. Of course, my stating that, I believe, sounds a whole lot simpler than it often is because it still requires a level of submission and obedience to the leading of the Spirit because, of course, God... Uh, made us creatures of free will and so we do have a responsibility to submit to uh, the will of God and and when we do that I believe that uh, that God will be glorified and our marriages will be blessed and enriched uh, through that process uh, so um, one, one of the things for me is knowing that the Holy Spirit is there to help me because certainly I need some help. Uh, when, we, when we come to a marriage or to a relationship, what, we, what happens is two individuals with their own baggage, their own issues, their own you know, uh, backgrounds, uh, things that may have happened when you were being raised. So you bring those things uh, to, uh, to a relationship with the oneness of becoming one. And certainly that takes the power of the Holy Spirit to do that. So uh, for me, uh, I, the Holy Spirit is, uh, is my source of power, my source of inspiration. Not only that, uh, I often refer to the Holy Spirit as a, a, uh, a, a photo in fourth zone. Uh, because when I do something wrong, the Holy Spirit will show me myself first. He doesn't show me my wife. He always shows me myself first. And so if anybody's going to get a ticket, they're going to send it to me. <laughs> Look, God's going to send it to awesome. me first. You yeah. had another question? You know what? I want to do it this way. I got, I got a question. This, okay. this is basically for, like, the single viewers out there. So in a way of, like, role play, I'm, I'm a young guy out here, and I desire to be married. Like, what would you tell me? What's your advice? How do I find a way to, like, do a, what, what, am I, what advice you got for me to when I'm courting her, when I meet her, like, how do I get to where you at? It's what I want to know. Brother Nasheen. Oh, um, excuse me. I'm sorry. Pause. I'm going to take it out of church for a minute. Okay. Take your time. <laughs> 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 no, but um, but I, I would I would truly evaluate um, my relationship with God before you get into any relationship, um, because uh, of the fact uh, um, uh, Elder Qualls just got finished talking a little bit about it uh, in regards to um, uh, accountability, submission, and, and different things in that nature. Uh, but more over the baggage, and you don't want to so much bring and, and of course. People have struggles and different things they're going through, right. but at the same time, um, your relationship with God uh, takes precedence over uh, trying to find someone else to invite into uh, that same uh, relationship. So, um, my thought to the young man would be, brother, make sure that you root it, ground it, and uh, abide in the works of, of, of the Lord. Yeah. If I were giving counsel to a young man, I would take him back over to Genesis and ask them to consider God's blueprint for a man before he considers bringing a wife into his in, in, or establishing a relationship or looking for a wife. When we look at scripture, we see that uh, before God made Eve, Adam had a job, Adam had a house, Adam had, you know, provisions. He had what he needed in order to uh, care for the woman in order to be a protector and everything that she needed him to be. So one of the things I would suggest is, as Nasheen said, as Minister Nasheen said, is to, uh, you know, look at uh, am I ready for God to give me a wife? Have I positioned myself? Have I done the things that, that Scripture has illustrated and that Scripture teaches us as it relates to when you look at Adam and Eve? Adam had what he needed before Eve came on the scene. House job, all those things. Yeah, good credit too. <laughs> <laughs> like Shazan. 
Did you have something for us? I definitely did because you guys are, are touching on a truly heartfelt subject right now, especially to all of our single uh, couples or single individuals out there. One of the biggest questions that people are hitting us up about is, what is the true meaning of shacking up? A lot of people don't see that in the Bible in terms of the discussion as to whether that is actually appropriate, inappropriate. What are your thoughts about, you know, two people, whether they are just dating, potentially engaged, but living together, but not having sex? They're abstaining from sex, but they're still shacking up. What are your thoughts about that? First of all, can I start by dispelling the myth? Uh, I'm pretty, very confident that if a man and a woman are living together, that they're having sex. Okay. Uh, I, of course, there's always an exception to the rule, but I don't know anybody yet who has met that exception. And I can, <laughs> I can speak from my own testimony when my wife and I met, we were living together initially. We were not married. And uh, the Holy Spirit began to deal with me about the fact that it, was, that it just wasn't the right thing to do according to the word of God. And, and some things, first of all, when we examine scripture, we're looking for something to be stated explicitly. Sometimes the, the scripture just implies what God's expectations are. And, it, and again, I have to go back to, to Genesis because when Eve came on the scene at that, they didn't live together one night hmm. without uh, Adam declaring that this is my wife. She is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And the law of first mention in scripture always says that how God established the things on the first time around is normally the principle that we should conduct ourselves by throughout our lives. Okay. Wow. Um, I, 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 I haven't heard that word shack in a long time. <laughs> it sounds like you grew up in the holiness church <laughs> rather than somewhere down the line. But um and, and and you know, the the church the church is good though. Mothers are, they get you in order, won't they? Um but the, the church the, the um the church has diminished uh to be honest with you, uh marriage in regards to yes. living together and mm -hmm. make, making it seem like uh, as if it's not, you know, uh important it, it, it is as to which it, it's very important and and with the word shack uh, uh just simply says just that uh rather than saying um that that um, um you're, you're committing fornication fornication is the word the proper terminology and with that um uh, elder Qualls mentioned that the consummating of uh the marriage and 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 the bi the bible talk about second corinthians i believe it's the seventh cha uh 12th chapter the temple of God, the, the body is the temple of God. Whoever mm -hmm. you join your mm -hmm. body with, mm -hmm. uh, uh, whether it be a harlot or whomever, uh, you become one with that. And considering that that, that it plays a, a major piece wow. uh, and, and in regards to our purpose, our plans, and what God has destined for us, because oftentimes we only we only look at that one thing. And, and you know, I, I, I minister to young folks. I'm going to say this real quick. And, and they always approach me with this. But I wear a condom. <laughs> you know, yeah. Wear yeah. a condom. Yeah. And don't and, and I and I remind the young brothers. I said, inside of your testicles is a testimony, mm -hmm. waiting to be released into the right person, which is ultimately going to fulfill your destiny. But because you're wearing that condom, you're standing in condemnation. Woo! Mm. Yeah. Woo! That's good. Wow. Oh, deep. 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 It's yeah. so deep, yeah. right? Well, and, well, fine, baby. Put it out there. And, you know, and, Go ahead, LK. Okay, okay, I, I would like to uh, talk about the word shack wow. and what that word implies in and of itself. When, when a husband and wife are married, they're building a house and they're building a home. People that are shacking are shacking. I don't want to live in a shack. In. I want to live in a house and a home. Right. Some of y'all afraid to call yeah. in because y'all are stepping on some toes. <laughs> Hit us up at Vessel Radio. At Vessel yeah, Radio, yeah, Gmail, and Instagram. You, you guys need to call in and get some of this. I'm telling you. Wow, this is this is getting deep. You had a question, Shazan? Yes, I do. Because we, <laughs> we, we definitely <laughs> get into notes, it. Okay, I'm so, taking notes. Yeah, me, me too, Cassandra. <laughs> yeah, I see you up there. So um, here's my question, and this is one that I've been dealing with personally uh -oh. 
in relationships ever since high school, right? So we understand uh, the word of God in Ephesians, uh, specifically 5, 22, verses 33. It gives us specific instructions on marriage, starting with wives submitting to their husbands as to the Lord. My question is, uh, why do you think the scripture starts off with wives submitting to their husbands when the divine order is husbands love, wives submit, and children obey? Hmm. Well, I can say that there is an order, first off, from the husband. He's to look to God. The wife is to look to the husband. The children are to look to both of them, actually. So. Yeah, there's a, and, and that's really good. And there's a, uh, the major factor is this. Oftentimes, you know, we, we want to diminish the word submission. Submission is no more than uh, a subject uh, destined for a mission. When you talk about um, power, a woman is powerful. And what submission is, is power under control power under control the loving aspect of of from the man from the man uh is is beautiful because that's what we talk about our john 3 and 16 for god so mm -hmm. love for god so, so love that word so is so important to identify that love because it shouldn't matter what that wife, and that's why even Adam was willing to, you know, indulge in the sin with Eve because he uh, uh, wanted to be so much a part of her. And, and think about that. The, you, he just simply said, so my mission, my mandate, my vow is simply to love. So a lot of times we, y'all think about that. A lot of times we fault Adam, but you don't know that the first Adam is just like the second Adam and loving Christ as, uh, uh, loving your wife as Christ. Love the church. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Wow. <laughs> You're looking like, okay, lessons in. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> well, listen, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. But for those of you tuning in, please make sure you give us a call at 276-D1-VESSEL. That is 276-318-3773. We are talking about love, marriage. We're going to get into the conversation about same-sex marriages as well as divorce when we return after this commercial break. Mm -hmm. Here's the feeling that my heart shares every the same, day. Baby. Oh, for you, you my red, my shining star, my light, baby. Here's the feeling that my heart shares every day. Oh, every day I'm waking up seeing God done bless me and God be loved. Life is so stress free and yes he. To show me his worth I've been praying for her since the day of my birth on, And man. together, y'all, we live happily She's so good, even Satan got to clap for me She got my back, you see She won't crack, you see Pray a warrior, which means she'll scrap for me And oh, oh I, I got the knock on wood She's a pure God sin, let this be understood And oh, Lord this is hard to explain Cause to try to sum her up is just too much for my brain And I pray that I'm not too much of a strain So this P31 girl can stay in the lane And I thank God each and every day for my M.A. L.I.A. M.A. It's the feeling that my heart shares every day, oh Yes, yes, it's getting hot in here But we learning something today This is for married, single, people in relationships You have to tune in, you have to check this out I'm, I'm really learning a lot I'm taking notes, I mean seriously you guys I got my pen out, I'm taking notes But this is wonderful, we are here joining us today uh, My co-host, Carlton Neal, a.k.a. The Apostle, okay And to my left, Elder Ron and Lady Faye Quarles. To my right, Minister Maxan and Nasheen Stevens. And we are having a great time just learning um, all about, I mean, just answers. You know, everybody's answer is not the same, but uh, pretty much leading up to the same thing. Um, just getting a, a, an opinion from a Christian-based opinion. So we want to hear from you guys. Call us 
or hit us up at VesselRadio at gmail.com or at VesselRadio on Instagram and Twitter. Okay, excuse me for reading, but I have a question. My question here comes from um, the scripture, 1 Corinthians 7 and 10 through 11. It talks about a wife not departing from her husband. And if she does leave, she is to remain unmarried or be concealed to her husband. And a husband is not to divorce his wife. What are your thoughts on divorce? Or do you think there's a reason that when divorce is okay, there's a reason that when divorce is okay. What are, you, what are your opinions on divorce? Maxam, Minister Maxam? For me, I, I can truly say, in my opinion, it all depends on the, the couple. Okay. Um, I would say if maybe cheating okay. occurred and you've forgiven and They've done it again and over and over and over. In a case like that, mm-hmm. me personally, I could understand that. Okay. And maybe. I know if I'm not mistaken, the Lord had given Moses a decree uh, of divorce, but because of how things had, you know, gotten, but yeah. it was, really... Yeah, it was because of the hardening of... Yeah. Hardening of um, a man's heart uh, it goes back to that for God so uh, so was intentionally uh, regardless of what's being done what has been done uh, continue to love that person and stay married and, and, and a significant part of that is we we always diminish uh, that the vow between you two was unto God mm-hmm. not just to one another but also unto God you know and and, and because of that uh, that that decree and, and notice, um, Moses had a lot, you know, he, he was dealing with, well, might as well say the Israelites was just straight Southeast and they, they didn't care. They was, you know, they, yeah, exactly. Southeast. Exactly. And they just, they just, uh, um, uh, as Elder Quarles talked about, they were burning, you know, wow. a lot of them, a lot wow. of them because of, uh, the intentions and different things that, that, that they weren't, uh, you know, getting that way and so forth. Right. A decree. And think about this though. And this is why I'm going to be quiet. Think about this. A decree. What is a, de- a decree? What is a decree? It's not the word of God. Okay. It's just the declaration from man. So that doesn't even stand, if you really think about it. A decree that was given by, to, by Moses, a decree to the people, it, it still wasn't the word of God. It was what the word of God said. Uh, uh, let no man yeah. put asunder. So you put asunder against decree, <laughs> it's not working. Wow. Apostle, what do you think about divorce? I think the, what's broken in the divorce proceedings is that, like, a lot of people jump into situations because they think the marriage is just, I just want to get married without going through the proper process of the covenant. In a lot of situations, the actual court stage is broke because we came together on the wrong on the wrong presidents from the from the get go, right. God was never the center. Because if we keep God at the center, there's no way that we can ever come apart. Yes. So when God is taken out of the, His proper place in the relationship, yeah. it falls apart. Amen. So what needs to change is the process. Amen. Amen, Lady Faye. Um, well, as the word says, uh, God hates divorce, okay. and I do. I hate even the word divorce when I hear of a couples about to divorce or thinking about divorce and I just feel really bad about it and I tell my husband can't they work it out you know it's something that they could do to stay together but you know if it's something that you can work out or get some kind of counsel or whatever the case may be it really would help a relationship but sometimes it is something that bad or miserable that can't keep you two together so you know you would have to part but that's the way I feel about it Divorce elder? Yeah, uh, my wife and I always said that we never wanted the word divorce to be a word in our vocabulary. Amen. And so we've uh, purposed in our hearts to practice that. But having said that, I do believe that there are conditions and circumstances where God will forgive us if it comes down to having a divorce. If a woman or a man is in an abusive relationship, if the husband, you know, beating you up or the wife going upside his head or pulling pistols and you're about to lose your life and and when I when I consider that 
as the apostle said, uh, it 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 kind of starts with a uh, with a strong, a solid foundation. And what I'm saying is, the Bible encourages us not to be unequally yoked uh, with the unbeliever. And so, when that happens, uh, the believer is going in one direction, and the other person in the marriage may be going in a completely different direction. The other thing is, in order for for a man and a woman, a husband and wife to stay together, both of them have to have a desire to want to be together. I believe some people get married and they have an escape clause, if not on in, in, written down, at least in their heart, that if this don't work, I'm just going to get out of it. And when you enter into a marriage with that as your uh, escape clause, premise or expectation, then already I think that's a self-defeating prophecy. I have to piggyback on that, uh, Elder Paul. That was, that was really good. Both, both were, uh, in regards to the covenant, as mm -hmm. well as um, uh, the, uh, what we just got to talk about. But the, uh, you know, there's, there's, um, there's most of the time, and, and this is why society, you know, has been creating it the way it, it, it has been. And I know we're gonna segue to, you know, the same-sex marriage is because uh, m many people don't take the covenant serious. Yes. Mm -hmm. They don't. They yeah. don't take it a vow as a vow to life. Mm -hmm. They only take it as a vow, you know, mm -hmm. to say I'm sharing or you know, right. uh, things of that nature. But I just wanted mm -hmm. to. I ain't gonna lie. Mm -hmm. It made me feel sick just to even mention divorce tonight, man. Shout out to Malia Neal, man. I love you, baby. I'm <laughs> matter of fact, I'm not just crazy about you. I'm insane. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's that's good. Funny. That's nice. Wow. Yeah. And and like um, Minister Nasheen mentioned, just not divorce, but marriage in same sexes. Shazan, you have any any specific question regarding that <laughs> well yeah specifically i would like to know what are your feelings about same-sex marriages and uh going into that ministers that are gay and actually ministering ministering uh to a large to anybody to any congregation what do you feel biblically the word of god says about that i know some of us obviously familiar with the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, but I mean, it's just getting out of hand it nowadays. Is. It is. What are your thoughts from that from a biblical perspective? Well, I'm going to go back to where I've, where I've referenced two or three times tonight. I'm going back to the book of Genesis, and uh, God uh, established in Scripture that the only uh, marriage relationship is between a man and a woman, period. Amen. That's it. And uh, Genesis, of course, is the uh, means beginning. And uh, again, I'm talking about the law first mentioned. Whenever God states a principle or a precept or whatever, uh, that should be our expectation throughout of all the scripture. Uh, uh, God never, uh, con the word of God never contradicts itself. And so, uh, Same-sex marriage is not pleasing to God. Uh, a man and a woman is the only true union uh, that God ordained. That's it. That's bottom me. line. Yeah. The bottom you line. Have an opinion, Minister Yeah. Um, I, I would, and I stand behind uh, what not only the Word of God, but also what Elder Quills uh, said uh, in regards to marriage being um, a sacred institution between uh, man and woman. And you know, the significant thing about that is that. A uh, man and woman just, uh, you know, weren't to uh, be married, but they're also to reproduce. Amen. They're to reproduce. And that's something that within that covenant of marriage, um, you know, you, uh, uh, Steve and Adam can't do that, you know. Um, uh, but, you know, uh, and, and, and as well as uh, women, it's yes. the same thing. It's the same thing, you know. Uh, and, and, of course, um, it is an attack on the church because that's how the church, that is the church, basically. Yeah. Uh, marriage, the institution of marriage is what um, formed the church, you know, uh, and, and gives us guidance. And the word of God simply uh, uh, state that uh, a man should not lay with another man as he would a woman. And it's in Leviticus, I believe it's the 10th tenth, tenth chapter. Mm -hmm. There's a few of them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a few of them. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's mm -hmm. like for those that, for those that take the mantle, want to get behind the pulpit and lead a generation of people to say that okay this is the new I, I mean this is the new era of the church it's clear that they obviously did not read the whole Bible it's some, some scriptures they missed <laughs> and some books they didn't look at and, and, and it's, it's way out of hand 
Listen, yes, it is. if I was to get up right now and act insane and throw a rock at somebody's car out there, the police is going to come lock me up because that is a law. Yeah. Yes. So Man. if we're going to follow man's law, you need to follow God's law. Amen. It is a law. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. You are so right. It is totally out of control. Um, and the sad part is they're starting so much younger nowadays. And um, the reason why, you know, you get vexed in your spirit is because you know the book of God. The word of God does not say anything about same-sex marriage. Shazan, you have any opinions? Well, uh, I agree, obviously, uh, with all the ministers of what you said, um, which also leads me, though, into my next question. All righty. Oftentimes, a lot of households are broken because of a lack of order. And even when it comes to decision making, what are your thoughts about, well, let me ask you, who is the decision maker in your home? Is it jointly? And what happens if it is joint decision making when the two of you can't seem to agree? What happens in that situation? Lady Faye. <laughs> well, just as I said uh, previously, uh, my husband is the uh, head of the household. He's the priest of the home. Um, he is the one that, you know, has the, he speaks and, you know, we talk together and, you know, I pretty much um, uh, love my husband and respect him enough and can go along with uh most of what we talk about or concerns or whatever it, the case may be. Sometimes agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, sometimes. Mm -hmm. I did want to jump on that word most of the time, but I'll leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, that's good, baby. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, well, well th this is my opinion about uh, levels of authority and levels of leadership. Uh, any good leader recognizes uh, those who uh, support him, those who are part of uh, the process of making decisions. And so my, I respect my wife's opinion. As a matter of fact, uh, when she, there was a time when she would give me uh, recommendations or, you know, suggest things that we do, and I would kind of, you know, not go along with it but I've learned uh, to that when she when she suggests something, normally if I take heed to it and follow it, it always works out in in my favor. It always works out to our benefit. That is a true statement. If I if if I that's as transparent as I can be when I follow her advice or take her recommendations, it'll usually work out. And, and not only that, because we've been together so long. Uh, and because the word of God declares that the two shall become one flesh, we've reached the point where we almost think alike. And the things that I like, the decision that I think are most uh, beneficial, or the best thing for the family or the finances, uh, she, she's, right, she's right there with me. We don't have a lot of uh, disagreements or a lot of conflict uh, about uh, some things. Of course, we have disagreements about a lot of things as well. But uh, but uh, I respect her opinion. Uh, she's a godly woman. Uh, she and I uh, are in the process of becoming one. And uh, decision making is not a big challenge for us. Amen. We, as, wow. it, as it relates to authority, leadership, or headship. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you tuned in and you were scared to call in, you missed a lot. So I hope that you've learned something, that you received something from this wonderful show. We just want to thank Elder Ron Quarles and Lady Faith for joining us once again, and the wonderful Minister Maxan and Minister Nasheen Stevens, um, young couples, older couples with wisdom and grace and, and, and a wonderful Christian background, and my co-host, Carlton Neal, the Apostle. You got to tune in next Tuesday with us here at Vessel Radio. Make sure you can still send us information at Twitter or in, on Instagram, and we'll answer it on the following show. Before we leave, the man behind the music, Shazan. Yes, we definitely want to uh, thank everyone for tuning in this evening. Obviously, we learned a great deal yes. of information this yes. evening. 
Hopefully it was a blessing to each of you as it was a blessing to me. Before we close out, though, we do want to go ahead and send our prayers to the Brown and Houston family. For those of you obviously paying attention to the news, uh, we are praying for Bobby Christina Brown and her family. Obviously, she lost her mother three years ago, come tomorrow, and now there has been discussions of pulling the life support on her tomorrow. So our prayers go out to those families and obviously to each and every one of you who are dealing with a lost loved one or just going through some difficult things. Just want to let you know, again, we're going to revert back to how we opened up by saying, for God so loved the world, which means that he loves you and you and you and whatever you're going through, just know that you can make it through it with God. God bless you. Hopefully we'll see you all again next Tuesday, same time, same channel. Be blessed. Ministry over industry, the vessel.